All right. Instead of a pun for this video, I figured I'd do something a little different. Um, like your mom. In The Reckoning of Time, the Venerable Bede makes reference to a mysterious ritual called Mother's Night. Bede does not go on to describe much about this holiday, and it is not mentioned in any other source, creating an air of mystery about it. But this is not rare in heathenry. There are often situations like this where we have only a little bit of information to go on when it comes to reconstructing our modern practice. So let's go through the process of reconstruction and take a look at what is available in history and explore how we might rebuild a celebration worthy of appreciating Mother's Night. Let's take a look at what Bede says in completion. After Bede gives a brief description of Yule and the months of the year, he then references Christmas Day and he says, That very night, which we hold so sacred, they used to call by the heathen word Modrenit, that is, Mother's Night, because we suspect, of the ceremonies they enacted all that night. And then, you know, he goes on to discuss the division of the year according to the seasons, because that's what he's writing about in The Reckoning of Time, but he knew damn well that describing the foul heathen celebrations would simply preserve them, and as a saint, he had no interest in doing that. So this sentence is what we have to contend with for this ritual, but it does tell us a number of things from which we can reconstruct a practice. Firstly, he describes it as a winter celebration and he gives us a date that is Christmas or Christmas Eve. Though with the challenges of the inconsistency of the application around the Julian calendar, this kind of this more provides us with a range rather than like a specific date. What we do know is that it seemed roughly associated with Yule and that it was around Christmas. You can tell that Bede was even a little, was a little offended about the, uh, the timing and the nature of Mother's Night, that it interrupted his, uh, his Christian sensibilities or something. How dare these dirty heathens celebrate the women's on this, the birth night of our holy Lord. I don't know what the Venerable Bede sounded like, um, but I'm going with that. Which leads us to the second thing, which is the name. Mother's Night is sometimes shown as Mother's Night, but the word is actually plural, celebrating many mothers rather than one mother. This gives us a, a few hints as to what the celebrations might have been like, but it's open, obviously, to interpretation. This could have been a celebration of mother figures among the deities, mothers among our ancestors, or even both. But it clearly has an association with a spiritual practice around motherhood. This connects us to an interesting phenomena that was common centuries prior, which is the number of religious temples and shrines that were collectively referred to as the matrones. These were common in Germania, Gaul, areas of Rome. Uh, and the finds around these deities, though numerous, are usually in sets of three, which brings to mind the Norns or the Fates. However, given the Roman interpretatio of these matrons, it seems that they were motherly figures, which doesn't really fit for the norns or the fates. This doesn't necessarily contradict Tacitus, but it certainly seems to be something that he left out, particularly because it seems that this was a practice among the large and fierce Germanic tribe called the Swaby, which Tacitus wrote about extensively. But he didn't cover this aspect of their religion, so the archaeological record is proof that Tacitus wasn't exactly comprehensive. The worship of the matrons seems to have lasted from around the dawn of Imperial Rome in the, uh, the first century BCE to the end of the migration period, which ranges to the, uh, the sixth century CE. It's likely that Mother's Night is referencing a late form of the worship of these matrons that we know so little about, or at least a practice related to it. The matrons in a heathen setting may be a subset of the disir, which are feminine spiritual guardians, or they may simply be a name for a number of mother deities, such as Frigg, Freya, Sif, and many others. Bede neglected to go into detail, but there are there's a number of possibilities here. The next thing is a brief description of timing, that is, that the celebrations would be enacted all that night. This gives the image of a long celebration through the night on a single night, which is a ton of information, really, more than we sometimes have. Now, beyond that, we don't really have anything that we can say with any degree of certainty, but in Reconstruction, we can start borrowing from other celebrations where we might have a little more information. Let's take, for example, 
the record of the midwinter celebration of Yule from Snorri in the saga of Hawken the Good. That record includes the description of a ritual, which is often rated by Reconstructionists looking for ritual structure. But we don't necessarily have to assume that the ritual for Mother's Night is the same, but we can borrow aspects of it in order to build a model for personal or group practice. What we have are parts of a heathen ritual that we can borrow. We have the circling of a fire for sanctifying a space or an offering. We have toasts made after an offering. We have a potluck celebration taking place. All of these things can be incorporated into a Mother's Night celebration fairly easily. But beyond that, there's a lot of room for personal exploration. Mother's Night can be a somber celebration a gathering in the night to remember our motherly ancestors and give a toast to the mothers among the gods as well as those ancestors. But it could also, in contrast, be a party in celebration of motherhood with festivities and games going all night, centered around a ritual event and a toast to the mothers among us as well as those among the gods and the ancestors. These are some possible reconstructions. There are many ways to use this information and build it into a personal practice, be it with a group or as a solitary event. It may even just be a night where you light a candle at your altar for the mothers among the ancestors and the gods and give a small offering with some time in the night for remembrance. As you can see, the application of Mother's Night has many options. It could reference the mothers among our ancestors. It could be for the mothers among the gods. It could be for our mothers here and now. It could be any combination of these things. Uh, many of the modern practices around Mother's Night incorporate it into Yule as one of the many days of celebration, that one of the days is set aside as Mother's Night. And I've often seen Mother's Night as the first night of Yule or even as like a pre-Yule celebration that leads into Yule. Any of these approaches is entirely reasonable. So, will you be celebrating Mother's Night? And if so, how do you plan on going about it? One of my early group rituals that I took part in was uh, a Mother's Night ritual. It was also the day that I learned that Mother's Night was a thing. I had no clue about it prior to that moment. And I, I remember it was... Uh, it was cold and rainy, but it was a somber event, as uh, ancestor-focused rituals often can be, but, but it was rewarding. But with that, hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. The like button, the subscribe button, and the bell are all celebrating YouTube's five-star rating system as their ancient mother. Participate in their celebration by clicking them all, and remember to find a way or make one. Mother's Night can also be like a possible bargaining chip for that Christian family that's not excited about your paganism. Get mom on your side. Be like, hey, mom, it's Christmas Eve. For pagans, that's Mother's Night. What do you want to do? <laughs>